All right, welcome to my parents' house. That's where I am. I wish we were all together in one space. My parents' house might not be the ideal location for that, but next year we can all be together in our new church space for Christmas and that will be so nice. Um, I wanna start by wishing everyone a very Merry Christmas Eve. And um, thank you so much for, for being here in this most unusual of Christmas services. Um, and again, thank you to everyone that volunteered, uh, volunteered, I voluntold, <laughs> asked if you could do a reading for us during the service. We'll have multiple, uh, different people doing different readings, including a recording of the Stones first doing our um, lectionary reading today, which hopefully will work perfectly well. Um, and we're also going to say a little prayer that internet issues are not a thing during this service. So welcome folks, welcome to Christmas Eve worship here with Waterville UCC. I'm so glad that you are here. We are an open and affirming church faithfully using what we have and who we are to serve those on the margins of our community. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey this Christmas Eve, you are most welcome here. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation, thou hast increased its joy. They rejoice before thee as with joy at the harvest, and men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, thou hast broken on the day of Medean. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle, Thomas, and every garment rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from the time forth forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Please join me in the call to worship. On this night, Christ is born. Now the Savior has appeared. On this night, the heavenly chorus resounds. All creation rejoices. On this night, the church throughout the world joins their cry. Glory to God in the highest. Alleluia.
Rejoice, people of God, the light has come into the world. O oh God, now we light the candle of your nativity. With the company of heaven and with the sounds of great joy, you come to us. This is the time of light and overwhelming joyfulness. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed a time when those who walked in the shadows would see a great light. A light would shine and a child would be born to us. Luke painted the nativity sky and repeated the heavenly song of the angels, glory, peace on earth and goodwill. At Christ's nativity, we now rejoice. If you'll join me in unison. God, our life and light, thank you for coming this night to us. Thank you for touching all heaven and earth with your splendor. In every corner of the world, shine this night with your peace. In every corner of our hearts, shine this night with your grace. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of invocation. We come before you in awe, O God, freshly aware of your glory and your love embodied in the midst of this world as a vulnerable child. Here amid dirt and straw, amid noise of cattle and labor of birth, we perceive your work. We dare to believe that it is you, God, coming to be among us in Jesus. And so we praise you with songs of joy. Glory be to you, O God, now and forever. Amen. I was originally going to have the actual book, but I wanted to make sure everybody can enjoy the illustrations. My family used to have a tradition when we were, myself, my older brother, my younger sister were a bit younger. Um, every year, my dad and my mom would give us a, a Christmas book and we would read it on Christmas Eve. So this is really special for me to be able to share this particular book with you because it's one of the ones that we bought. And on the inside, I didn't take a picture of it. Um, my dad wrote, uh, for Sarah, Andy, and Jenny, may you always decorate a tree. So this is The Little Christmas Tree by Carl Ruhlman and Anne, illustrated by Anne Muller. The Little Christmas Tree. Once there was a fir tree that grew at the edge of the forest. Behind it, the great pines towered and an oak tree spread its shadow far and wide. Birds built their nests in the pines. Squirrels ate the nuts and acorns. Children had even built a house in the oak, but nobody, not even a mouse, thought the fir tree was useful. It was just too little. The little tree hated being so small. It felt as if nobody took it seriously. Someday I'll show them, the fir tree thought, but it didn't know how. One day, two hares came over to the meadow to the edge at the edge of the forest. Hey, take a look at that, cried one, pointing at the fir tree. We can use that for jumping practice. It's just the right size. The hare got a running start and took a great leap right over the fir tree. The second hare did the same. The little tree was green with anger, but no matter how high it stretched, it couldn't even reach the hair on their bellies. 
with its needles. Just you wait, it thought. Someday I'll show you. I just don't know how. Another time, a hedgehog came by. She was in a terrible mood. She'd been rummaging through the nearby house's compost pile, and now her spines were all messy, covered in potato peelings, bread crusts, even a salami wrapper. When she saw the fir tree, she exclaimed, oh my, that tiny little tree is just the right size. And before the fir tree could pull back its needles, the hedgehog scooted in among its branches and scraped off all the muck. The fir tree trembled with fury. Just you wait, it thought, wobbling its tender green tip. Someday, all of you will see what I can do. But it still didn't know how. In autumn, the air grew chilly. A cold wind blew down the branches and stripped the leaves from their trees. Only conifers, like the pines and the fir tree, stayed green. The animals were out enjoying the last of the sunshine before snow covered the field. And then came winter. Snow fell for three days. The little tree stood mournfully at the edge of the meadow. Every once in a while, it would shiver the snow from its branches so it didn't completely disappear in a drift. One bright morning, the little tree heard the crunch, crunch of footsteps. It was a boy named Peter and his father. They were looking for the perfect tree to cut down and take home for Christmas. Peter ran up to the fir tree. This one, he cried. This one here? It's so small, his father said. Not for me, it's just the right size, said Peter. His father laughed out loud. You're right, it is beautiful. And it is exactly your size, but it would be a shame to cut it down when it's still so young. He thought for a moment. I know, what if we brought the decorations out here to the forest? We wouldn't have to cut the tree and it could keep growing as you keep growing. Every year, it could be your own wild Christmas tree, the same size as you. Oh yes, cried Peter. That very afternoon, Peter came back to the forest with his parents. They pulled a sled with a big box on it. From the box, they took wonderful red and deep blue glass balls and hung them on the fir tree's branches. The tree took great care not to drop a single ball. There wasn't enough room for all the balls, so Peter set the rest in a ring around the base of the tree. Finally, Peter fastened a gold star on top. The star was quite heavy, but the tree was so proud that it didn't bend a bit. Wonderful, said the father. Really, just the perfect size for you, said the mother. It's the most beautiful Christmas tree I've ever seen, Peter said. The next day, all the animals came to see the little Christmas tree. They were awed by its beauty. The fir tree knew it had finally shown them that it was indeed just the right size for something truly special. Every year at Christmas, Peter came back. Every year, Peter and the fir tree grew a little bigger. But no matter how tall the tree grew, even when it towered over Peter's head, it stayed just the right size and the fir tree remained the most beautiful Christmas tree for Peter his whole life long. The end. Folks, will you pray with me? Lord, on this Christmas Eve, help us to see small things, things that might be easy to ignore. Just as Jesus came to us as a tiny baby, Help us to see that great things can come in small packages, in packages we don't expect. Help us to celebrate them, to decorate them with beautiful things and kind, loving words. Today, tomorrow, and every day after that. Amen.
Folks, it's now time for us to offer prayers to God on this, our Christmas Eve. If you have prayers you would like to share with the rest of our congregation, please put them in the chat box down below. Folks, together, let us be in a spirit of prayer. Creator, Christ, and Spirit, we bring our prayers to you with hope for a future filled with peace, with joyful songs of praise on our lips, and a love for all humanity that was perfectly presented through Jesus. We come together to share in the celebration of your coming to us. You came not to conquer with a sword, but to conquer with love. You came not as an emperor decked in gold and draped in silks, but as a vulnerable, defenseless, newborn infant, wrapped in bands of cloth and laid in a manger. The source of your power is not anger and threats, but kindness and compassion. People will see that we follow you not by cruel slogans or shouts of division, but by our love for one another and all creation witnessed through what we think, what we say, and how we act. As you came to us as that vulnerable infant, so you bless us in our own vulnerability. May we always remember that you too have lived a human life, have faced hardship, loss, and times of great trial. We pray that your presence be felt with all those known to us and those we have yet to meet all our siblings in creation that are vulnerable, that are weak, that are ill, that need protection, kindness, love, and nurturing. Let us be as Mary and Joseph, tending to their newborn son, doing our best to serve those who are in need, providing what we can so that all may prosper. St. Francis of Assisi would pray, so we do also that you make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred, we will bring your love. Where there is darkness, we will bring the shining light of the Christmas star, guiding all to you. And where there is sadness, we, like the angels appearing to slumbering shepherds, will bring the joyful good news of your birth among us. We pray that this Christmas, the celebration of your arrival with us may herald the arrival of renewed hope, steps towards peace, reasons for great joy, and many, many occasions to share your love to all we meet. We hold these prayers in our heart along with our prayers that have gone unspoken, knowing that you hear us, you understand us, and that you are our ever replenishing wellspring of hope, peace, joy and love. Lord, we thank you for your gifts to us, the sort of gifts that may not be beneath the Christmas tree, but that most certainly arrive at Christmas every year. We offer a prayer of love and thanksgiving, a commitment to carry forward the spirit of this season throughout the year to come, saying in whatever language or version we are most comfortable with, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
A reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So, also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and Chef Mary, Mary <laughs> gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. And of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with angels praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds, shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. I can't see that. That's a wrap. <laughs> To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. What hope, what peace, what joy, and what love must have spread over those shepherds upon hearing this declaration from that angel. Now, they may have been quaking in their boots or sandals a little bit, uh, so much so that the angel did have to tell them, do not be afraid. Once they had calmed down, how they must have been struck by what undeniably very good news it was to hear that a savior had been born to them, one that is of the line of David, one that is a true king. Now, these shepherds, yes, they may have looked like the pictures from the nativity scenes that we all know so well and the Christmas specials, men with head wrappings and beards, crook in hand, but they may also have included young children, boys and girls, who had been sent by their families to keep watch over the flocks at night. So now I want you to imagine that fear and wonder in the eyes and the heart of a small child. A child who quickly covers their eyes 
as the whole sky is filled with brilliance and shining light from a multitude of the heavenly host and then swiftly switches to clapping their hands over their ears while they hear this crazy exaltation of the angel saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among all whom he favors. The whole sky was filled and then they vanish. The night sky is once again still and silent. Perhaps the older shepherds are rendered speechless, but that's rarely the case with children as Zoe may have just shown us. What just happened? Did you see that? How many angels did you count? Did you understand what they said? My mom is going to freak out when I tell her about this. Why do you think they appeared to us? We're just a group of kids, simple shepherds. Why us? Does that sound familiar? It's the same question we thought Mary may have asked when she was visited by the angel Gabriel and told of God's wondrous plan for the world. Why me? Why us? What's so special about us? Part of the beauty of Christmas is how it shows that our God turns things on their head. You think the mother of the Messiah should be a woman of means, a queen in a castle with hundreds to attend her. God will pick this teenage girl of no particular background. You think I should tell the emperors and the priests of the world about the coming of this new Messiah. Well, I'm going to tell these shepherds instead. Luke leaves out Matthew's magi. It's just the shepherds, simple people, many young children, maybe people the same age as Mary. They are Jesus's first visitors, people just like you and I. You think this new Messiah should come and descend to earth on a cloud of fire, sword in hand, ready to cut down God's foes. Well, here are the words of God's angelic messenger. This will be a sign for you you will find a baby wrapped in bands of cloth and laying in a manger, a baby, a small, defenseless, vulnerable, probably crying, very human, maybe screaming, baby. That is how God joins us on earth. That is the sign for us. We worship a God of total omnipotence and power and total vulnerability and humanity. Our God turns our expectations and the expectations of the world on their head in this Christmas story. Tonight, friends, I pray that you continue to find the ways that God has turned things upside down. Times when at first you saw closed doors but then one opened. Times when you thought you were totally alone and someone appeared and stood by you. Times when you felt unworthy and someone affirmed you. When you found no room at the inn, but people you had never met came and joined you in the stable. These are the moments that connect us to the Christmas story. These are the moments that we feel the presence of God in our midst. May you hold them in your heart, rejoice in them, and tell others your wonderful stories and your very, very good news. Amen. Friends, I want to thank everyone for their continued giving to our church, especially in this time of great need in our state and our community. Uh, it's, it's a hard thing to give financially right now. So the fact that people in our community are still finding places to, to give financially, but also give of their time and their skills and their talents to help those on the margins of our community.
Lord, we know that the gifts of Christmas that really matter are those that make a real difference in people's lives, in lives of people we may never meet, but who will feel the warmth of your spirit through the generous gifts offered this day. May they go towards building a world where there is room at the inn for everyone. We pray these things in your holy name. Amen.
folks, please join me at the bold sections, at the end of each of our stanzas. This is The Wait by Margaret Deland. At the break of Christmas day, through the frosty starlight ringing, faint and sweet and far away, comes the sound of children singing, chanting, singing. Cease to mourn, for Christ is born, peace and joy to all men bringing. Careless that the chill winds blow, growing stronger, sweeter, clearer. Noiseless footfalls in the snow bring the happy voices nearer. Hear them singing, winter's drear, but Christ is here, mirth and gladness with him bringing. Merry Christmas, hear them say, as the east is growing lighter. May the joy of Christmas day make your whole year gladder, brighter. Join their singing. To each home, our Christ has come. All love's treasures with him bringing. Friends, go in peace to love and serve our newly born Lord. May the joy, hope, peace, and love of God be with you all. Amen. <laughs>